do you suck at doing concealer? Does every time you do your concealer, you feel like it's a wrinkly, crepey mess under there and you look more dry than you did before? But you got bad dark circles like I do and you know you have to have some sort of concealer? Me too. Hi there, YouTube family, and welcome into today's video, which we are going to be talking about this whole under eye area and concealer and how it is so hard to find a good routine and how it is darn near impossible to find anything perfect once you have mature skin underneath there. I can raise my hand and attest to this because this is the hardest thing after being on YouTube for almost four years that I have ever tried to take care of. I think I still kind of suck at it a little bit, <laughs> but it's one of those things that we all have to do or we all struggle with as we age. Crepey, dark circle, under eyes. And We're gonna get into this right now so that you can see what I do, but I'm gonna get you just a little bit closer. Okay, I think that's close enough. <laughs> and you guys can see how bad my dark circles are. I have my foundation on, but I haven't done anything to my under eyes besides use my cream. I would suggest to you guys that if you do have dry, crepey under eyes, there is an absolute need to get those plumped up. You need to moisturize that as much as possible so that even before you put on anything under there, you've got kind of a tackiness underneath your eyes. And my absolute holy grail for taking care of that tackiness underneath the eyes is my Sukiyaka Suhada eye cream, the urea eye cream. I will make sure that I link that below, but I put a very, very generous amount underneath my eyes. And when I start my concealer routine, I can still feel that that feels tacky. So I know that it's a little bit mo more moisturized than normal and it's being plumped up. Okay. All right, after that, I'm gonna go in with the Catrice Liquid Camouflage Under Eye Primer. This is also very moisturizing. I love doing this. It just kind of gives that extra little bit of plumpness under there and it helps so much. You guys would not believe how much just putting that little bit of that under eye primer on there because it's not a primer like you would think that you goes on your face or even goes on your eyelids. It's just something that gives the extra moisture, the extra oomph to plump up those wrinkles and push them out. Okay, but after that, I do go in with an eyeshadow base, but this one right here is called NYX Proof It. I like it for eyeshadow, but I really, really like it for doing this. And I don't wait until that Catrice is dry. I will just go under and I'll put like a couple dots here in order for it to just kind of mix right there with that camouflage or the Catrice under eye primer. And I'm just going to kind of just work that in a little bit with my finger and I can feel how hydrated that under eye area is. But what's gonna happen now is it's gonna, this is gonna help seal in or keep on our concealer throughout the day. And that's why I use it this way, is just do a little bit. And I really like it because it's not a product that is super drying like some eyeshadow primers can be. Okay, so if you're in a hurry in the morning and you can't wait for that to kind of set in and just kind of dry on its own, just kind of tap it lightly with your finger until you feel like it is kind of doing its job. It's kind of melting into the skin, but you have a little bit of tackiness still there. The next thing that I'm gonna go in with is my LA Girl Pro Conceal. This is in the color Peach. Yes, I did used to use orange from Maybelline. I still think that's fantastic, but what I like about this is the creamy consistency of it. So this has been kind of my new holy grail as far as under eye. And I'm gonna be looking right here just for a second. And I'm gonna put that on. And I'm just gonna trail that down just a little bit down where my eyes are really bad. And then I'm gonna lightly tap it across. Now this right here, is the point where you would really need to wait and let this part just set down. Because if you don't, it's gonna mix with your concealer. Now you guys, I had already put on in my waterline the color that I'm wearing today, which is a purple. And I want to make sure that I tell you that I do that because if I forget and I do that after I've done my concealer routine, then I will get fingerprints in my concealer because I pull down like this. So that's just the reason that I already have it on. And that's another little tip too. Each layer that you put on, you need to make sure that it's not creasing. It's not really building up in those fine lines. And it is hard, you guys, because I have 
huge expression lines. When I smile, my whole entire area right there creases and crinkles and that's where I've gotten most of my problems from when I've tried to do concealer before. So after you've let that set, you've let your color corrector set in and you have kind of just bounced across it to make sure that it isn't creased anywhere. Now you can go in with your concealer. And you guys, I really have stumbled across something special, I believe. This is from Makeup Revolution. It's actually Revolution Pro. This is called Ultimate Coverage Crease Proof Concealer. This is so thick. And I mean, it is thick. So you guys are not gonna be used to this. And I haven't, it, this has taken me a big learning curve. But what is really great about it is that I can use such a teeny tiny amount get away with that. And because there's so little on there, there isn't all of that going in and settling into all of those lines. And the other thing is that throughout the day, I can have expressions and it still be there. It moves around with my eye movement or my you know expression movement. So I'm really excited about this. I'm gonna squeeze it and I'm going to just get the tiniest amount Look at that. Can you guys see how little teeny tiny that amount is? Maybe I need to back up. There is so little on my fingertip. The smallest amount that I've ever used for any concealer any time. And I have been talking for a while about using small amounts because if you have too much on there, it's gonna cake up. But this is even less than I've ever used before. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna just very lightly just start dotting this across here because not only is it going to take care of this under eye area, but it's gonna be able to come down right here onto the cheeks where I have a few age spots and it's gonna cover that too. Okay, I'm gonna leave that eye undone like that. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take just a tiny bit more for the other eye, little teeny tiny amount. And I'm going in and I'm just going to tap, tap, tap and make a little area right here and then down again, just a little bit right there. Now, I am not one that does the Instagram, you know, look of bringing it down in a triangle. I'm not like that, but I do have these little age spots right there that really bother me. So I go in and I just kind of tap my finger across those. Okay. This side has been setting for a second. Now we're gonna come back in here and we are just gonna pounce on this and bounce around like crazy. No dragging, ladies. That's what causes more wrinkles. We are not gonna drag anymore. And we are just gonna continue to work this in with the warmth of our finger. And we are just gonna work, work, work until it gets completely blended. And I want to do this in real time so you can see how much blending I actually do. And I'm just gonna keep going and talking because yeah, I wanna make sure that you see how much blending I do. I'm not just going across it really quickly. I, I am pouncing and pouncing and pouncing with my finger back and forth, bouncing, pouncing. I do a little bit down here just to get up that redness from around your nose that we all get. Okay, before I go any further, this is if you didn't work it in good enough. Hopefully you guys can see. This is if you didn't work it in good enough, this is it when you work it in. Can you tell the difference? Isn't it amazing? So we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do this one and hopefully you guys can see how nice that does. Isn't that amazing how much coverage I got out from that teeny tiny, like it was actually like a pinhead, literally. And I was just shocked when I first found this and when I first was like, oh my word. I just could not believe how well it did. Now. What you're gonna have to do, if you go ahead and you do the rest of your makeup, which I'm gonna go off camera and do, and I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you that there will be a few little settlings because you might've gotten a little bit too much at that point. And then I'm gonna let you see what that looks like before I put mascara on and I have one more tip for you. All right, after all of that and now I'm getting ready to do my mascara, I'm gonna go look at this one more time because there probably is some settling in there. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. But again, I'm just gonna go across here and I'm just gonna tap. And the settling is just happening out here. So I'm gonna be real careful not to go in here and tap with my finger anymore because I don't want that really dark area to have too much taken off of it. Okay, and as a last step, because I'm not putting any powder on, I don't like to do powder there because it just doesn't, 
it just doesn't look good. So as a last step, I'm gonna go over it with the Seal the Deal Hydrating Setting Mist from Flower Beauty. And I'm really going to kind of just stick in this area with the eyes. Because All right, once you do that, try not to make any expressions for a minute. And you're just gonna let that sit down until it's completely dry. You can fan it if you want to. I don't have my fan right here with me, but you can fan it if you want to, to just kind of get it to completely set down while you're not making any expressions and I'm trying really hard not to smile or do anything right now. And the very last thing I do is put my mascara on my bottom lash line. Okay, you guys gonna get really, really close. Hopefully the camera will go ahead and focus on that. I think it is. Now, if you have even the slightest amount of, you know, where you sweat or anything under your eyes, you might want to do a teeny tiny bit of powder and then go on top of that with that spray again. But I find that since it's such a dry climate where I'm at right now, the heaters are on, the, the indoor air is dry, I'm finding that this is enough. And the other thing is I really try hard to just wait and let it set down. Now there are days like when I'm completely done with my makeup and I go back to do my like my final check that I'll take my beauty blender and I will just go right out there on the outside. The reason being is because that again is where I have all those wrinkles and the beauty blender will pick up any excess at all. But without disturbing this nice area that I have right here going with the concealer. So I'm gonna back this camera up just a little bit. All right, you guys, that is my tips and tricks if you suck at concealer like I do. I hope that you did enjoy this. Please give it a thumbs up. I am going to put a couple pictures at the very end of this video where you can see how it held up. I hope the video did help. Tell me any of your little tips and tricks that you have about doing concealer. If there's anything that you've found that is tried and true and works so well, and even products that you've used. I feel like this new Revolution Concealer is just something that is really special for mature eyes that have a lot of wrinkles underneath there and a lot of crepiness. So that's it. Thank you so much for sharing a part of your day with me. Hope everyone is happy and healthy and I will catch you all in my next video. Love ya. Bye-bye.